Hello everybody, hope you're well. First of all, thank you very much for tuning in to this channel again. Uh, I'm glad to say last month, in the last 28 days, we've had nearly 60,000 people watch some of the videos all around mortgages. In this video, we're going to talk about the property market within London. And I think there is, there is some huge problems, certainly within the buy-to-let sector, that will actually fly off and it will actually go through to the greater market of first-time buyers, next-time buyers. And I'm going to explain how the buy-to-let sector or the second home sector in London is at his knees and is potentially going to have huge problems coming up in the next six months or so. Uh, and we're going to look at some of the remedies out there that could potentially come about, but also some of the dangers within the greater market, some of the other things that, uh, frankly, the mainstream media is not talking about. Um, and we'll run through some of the figures, actual figures around uh, some of these points that I'm making. As always, like and subscribe. If you have, if you know someone who's a landlord or someone who's looking to purchase a property, a first time buyer, next time buyer, please share these videos via social media. It will really help us. And I'll tell you what else is we really could do with is more comments. I want to hear from the nearly 10,000 subscribers what you guys think about what's going to happen and certainly about the content of this video. Thank you so much and I'll catch you on the video. Hi, it's Pime here from Niche. Hope you're all well. Right, let's talk about the London property market, okay? Because I think everything else will flow from the London property market. Um, and some of the problems that I envisage uh, and see within this market, for all those people that are homeowners, buy-to-let landlords, next-time buyers, first-time buyers, um, looking at London will give us a good idea of where we're going to be in the next couple of months, certainly six months to a year. So I don't have to go through the whole thing again, why interest rates have gone up, you know, the price of, you know, all the costs and all the blah, 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 blah. Just go and turn on the BBC for that. But let's talk about the things that the BBC is not talking about. Let's talk about the things that the mainstream media simply do not have the time or expertise, funny enough, to, to run through. Um, one of the, uh, the challenges within the, the London market has always been that when you are wealthy, um, in the hyper sort of, you know, Chelsea's and the Mayfair's and all the really high-end places and the Knightsbridge's, a wealthy person in London is not competing with the next person who's wealthy in London. When you're looking to buy a property in Knightsbridge, you're competing with all the other wealthy people around the world that want to buy there. They want to part their money there. And we're not talking about mortgages, okay? We're talking about people that are super wealthy and are looking to buy properties and park properties and park money. Keep it safe, okay? Keep it safe from governments. Keep it safe from the tax map. All sorts of things, okay? So central London has got its own hyper, high-end central London has got its own rule, okay? And in fact, because of the way the pound is and because it's devalued, that market will actually do quite well because that's not reliant on getting mortgages, certainly from UK lenders. So that's not reliant on that so much. Um, that That's reliant on, look, if the pound drops by 25, you know, 20, 30 bips, that's actually going to be cheaper, cheaper to buy. So that market I'm not talking about. I'm talking about your average Joe London buy-to-let market or the London residential market let's go from anywhere from half a million to two million okay or half a million to one and a half million okay that market's different it's a totally different ball game um, and let's look at why i think that that market's under pressure and will be under pressure and some of the challenges within that market um, and pretty much anybody in london most of i would say 90 percent of people in london are in that bracket Okay, so um, and how I'm going to let's let's run through some figures from a buy to let perspective. If you are a landlord, how you're affected, and once you understand this, this is not just for the landlords. Once you, as a home buyer, first time buyer, next time buyer, understands this concept, then hopefully you're better informed to make a decision somewhere down the line in the next year. Because ultimately, if you understand this calculation and where we're going with this, you will be informed and you will know what to do. And hopefully, uh, you'll get an idea of where we are as things stand. Because I do believe there's going to be changes made. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be 
all hell is going to break loose. Right, so let's look at a, a rental calculator. Let's assume that a property is, we're not going to go very high end, let's go £650,000, okay? So semi-detached house, pretty much in most parts of London, around 650k. Um, let's assume that you've done very well, and let's say you've got it on rent, but let's say you've only got 50% loan to value. Let's even just say you've got 300k mortgage, 3, 350 mortgage on it. So you've got quite a lot of equity in that property. Good for you. And over the years, you've done quite well. You've had good cash flow. Your interest rate's been low, one and a half, two percent, two and a bit. Smoothly, you get a couple of months worth of cash flow. Yes, you've been hit with the tax changes. Yes, you'll have to pay more of that away to the tax man. But you can live with that. You can live with that. So let's take an example of a lender. Now I've put an example of a bank which is a little bit of a hybrid. They are on the high street, but they're not known as to be one of the most competitive of banks when it comes to pricing. Where they have been historically very strong is on working out criteria, whether that's how much you can borrow, whether the type of clients they can deal with them, whether it's to do with the age limits of clients, whether it's to do with the income limits of clients. They've been very progressive in their approach in the buy to let sector certainly but also on the residential side right so let's look at that so for a person who's a high rate taxpayer and let's assume you're a high rate taxpayer because you know in the first place you could afford a 650k mortgage oh 650k property and you've still got a 300k mortgage hi there i'm just watching the edit for this video and there's something really important that i haven't mentioned majority of the properties that are held in london are actually held in people's personal names okay so their tax banding and how much they earn does have an impact a direct impact on their rental calculations um, in recent years because of the tax changes a lot of the properties that have been purchased have been purchased through limited companies um, so uh, I want to make that clear at the moment I'm only really talking about people that own their properties in their own names because the way mortgage interest for example is calculated is different for limited companies so that's one thing the second thing which is really really important is I'm only talking about smaller figures some of these loans is in London can be very very high but I thought we'll just keep it to a manageable sort of figures so some of the figures that I will give you some of the examples um, you know you've just got to double them sometimes with some of the some of the scenarios out there so enjoy the uh, in, enjoy the uh, the rest of it but i just wanted to make that clear thank you but it's on a buy to let so let's assume that that's the case on a five year fixed so you're going to do a five year fixed back in 2021 30th of the 11th 2021 the stress test now it's so important you guys understand stress testing now, what stress testing is, is the lender turning around and saying, never mind the fact that you're going to pay 2% interest rate on your mortgage for the next five years. We're going to treat it as if you were going to uh, um, pay 3.5%. So we're going to stress test that by 3.5% of the rental amount by a factor of 140% of the rental figure. But let's put that away in simple terms. If you were going to get a £50,000 mortgage, you needed £205 a month rental. If you needed a £300,000 mortgage, you needed a rental of £1,230, which is not unreasonable in London. Um, you know, most of those type of properties around the six, seven hundred mark will probably go anywhere from £1,800 to £2,000, maybe a little bit more. So that's not reasonable. So by the time you've paid everybody off and you know you can make it work with that the rent the lenders can make it work with that so back in earlier this year metro turned around and said you know what we're going to change things and they followed suit and this is not just them i've just highlighted them right but pretty much all the lenders they readjusted their stress testing and they said look you know we'll do it at four some did at four and a half metro did it at four and came out and said we'll do it at four percent so the same mortgage of £300,000, you needed now to have £1,404 rental to make that work for you to be able to borrow that amount. Again, as I've said, the rentals were generally around 1800 to 2000 no problem. As of Friday, they've come out and said, we will rest stress test 7.5%. I'm not saying their interest rate is 7.5%. The interest rate may be 4, maybe 5%. But what they are saying is, if you come to us, we're going to assume 
that your your rentals have to work out based on a seven and a half percent interest rate now that deal which was very comfortable back then all of a sudden you need two thousand six hundred and twenty eight pounds what if it was a 350k mortgage well you need three thousand and sixty six pounds rental to make that fit and they are by no means the only ones nat west came out with something similar on similar rates only on on sunday believe it or not nat west and that's a high street lender high street pricing high street rates competitive but they're running for the hills that's almost saying we don't want to lend without saying we don't want to lend okay basically saying we don't know what's going on we're now going to hike this up because we don't want too much of that business but this will have a profound impact on landlords now this, these are there are better rate lenders out there there are slightly better rental calculations so historically as a mortgage broker we would have said right forget about the high street we can't make the rental calculations work because the high street lenders are more risk adverse they have a harsher rental calculation we will take that to the non high street lenders who would traditionally you would cost you more you'll have a higher rate to pay however you could borrow what you can borrow the problem is that that doesn't happen the high street lenders the non high street lenders are not there and they've got even higher rates so their stress testing is six and a half seven percent anyway so it's not as if it's going to be their actual rate is you know anywhere from five and a half to seven percent so it doesn't really work even if the rates five and a half they're stress testing it at 6.99 or seven percent or something like that so there are huge problems because if you are a landlord right now in london you had a couple of things going for you which you haven't anymore you've got the higher rate tax pays you've got the tax changes that have happened You've got the mortgage interest relief changes and what that means is um, you can't offset your interest uh, mortgage interest anymore as a cost so if your mortgage was a thousand pounds a month and you were getting 1500 pounds rent historically you used to put aside that thousand pounds and then play it from the 500 pounds margin pay your insurances pay your other bits and pieces say you were left with 300 pounds a month or 400 pounds a month you would pay tax on that that's not the case anymore uh, Basically, the Treasury said, tough. Oh, interest rates are tripled. Tough. We will tax you on your income. We will tax you, essentially, you can't offset this mortgage interest relief, which is a massive problem. Not a problem necessarily if interest rates are low and your mortgages are small. If you're getting two grand a month and your mortgage is 300 pounds a month, not a big deal. You could swallow that. But at the moment, you can't. Your mortgage has now tripled or quadrupled, so you got that. You then are going to pray to God that your tenants pay you. Because good luck trying to get tenants out with the court system that we've got and the way things work. Basically, you are a mark. You're the wealthy landlord. You're the one who's got the money. The tenants can't pay. You know, it will drag out. You've got to go through the courts. You've got to go through the system. It's not going to be cheap. It's going to be more labor intensive it's going to be a lot more stressful so you've got all of those things to worry about and you're thinking what why am i doing this for now i used to do it for price appreciation but it looks like the way it's going to go with the economy i'm not even going to get that so you're going to start looking at your options of selling so maybe you got one two three four or maybe you got 10 15 you'll start going through that portfolio and you go well that problem gives me that property gives me problems or that doesn't give me a good enough rental use and so forth all, all of a sudden that stock that wasn't available in the market all of a sudden starts becoming available now it's going to be available at unrealistic prices because people haven't sold those properties in a long time by the way landlords are going to get hammered on the capital gains tax as well that you know these properties were 200k 150k and all of a sudden they're 700k so if you're going to sell it at 700k what are you going to do so you're going to get you know the higher rate capital gains tax pay on it so that's the problem for the landlord for the people that are looking to buy there is an opportunity and i said this in my last video and i got absolutely slated by some people saying you're just trying to take advantage you're just trying to make money out of the market you're trying to do this you're not independent first of all let's make something clear i am totally not independent okay i've got 200 videos 
near enough 200 videos on my channel talking about how I make money, how I'm a mortgage broker, how mortgage brokers do it, what I can do as a mortgage broker. So if you want independence, go to the BBC because it's not about being independent. I'm just telling you how I see it. Now you can agree with me or disagree with me, but I've never come out there and say, look, you know, my views are you know, independent of what you should, no, my views are my views and they do have a direct bearing on my business and what I do for a living, okay, and that, let's put that out there, okay, um, in terms of, in terms of this situation here, there is going to be winners and losers, some of the losers are going to be landlords right now that are overstretched, heavily geared, are panicking and looking to sell, so if you were a landlord, the things to do is, hopefully, you're not that geared, Secondly, don't panic, okay? I think something has to give, and I think legislation, lending rules are going to change. The difficulty you've got is buy-to-let mortgages do not fall currently under the remit of the Financial Conduct Authority. They're actually not regulated. The lenders are, and the lenders have chosen to use many of the rules for regulation for buy-to-let, but actually it doesn't fall under the remit of the Financial Conduct Authority. So there needs to be a dialogue between the regulator and the lenders and the various parties and the brokers and every, all the associations involved, who I'm sure it's probably happening right now, to try to make those adjustments so it can work. But until the price of funds, the swap rates, until that changes, we are stuffed. Okay? doesn't matter if the best regulation comes in, doesn't matter if the best environment, if the cost of money is expensive and the markets are worried about the UK economy, nothing's going to get fixed. But I believe that it will get fixed, um, um, but it will take some time for to go through the system. I believe um, that once that once we know where we are, the markets will stabilise. So the first thing I would do is probably not panic, and I'll probably sit tight for a little while. Yes, I know it's easy to say you're going on a high rate, but I, I think we've got to wait for this to play out. You know, you can't just make a, a knee-jerk judgment for a week. So that's what I would do. There is no magic secret there. There is no lender that will do this and lender will do that. It's just literally of just sitting it out and see how the markets uh, react to what's going to happen. There's U-turns going to be galore. This is going to be U-turns galore. And they will call it listening to the people or listening to the members. But it's not. It's a U-turn. It's a damn right U-turn. And... Um, they will have to make quite a number of those, right? So that's if you're a homeowner, you're a landlord, and you're looking to do that. If you are someone who's looking to get into the market, buy that property, pull that trigger, I don't, I don't envy your decisions because let's say you've got affordability now. You've got all of these things that could be problematic in the future, right? And I haven't even talked about a few other things that are external to us, and we'll, talk, we'll get to that. But you've got... You've got the higher cost of borrowing, which you're going to have, right? But then you think, okay, well, I'm going to get a decent price. There'll be a reduction. I'm going to I'm going to get a good deal. I've been waiting for a bloody good deal. I'm going to get a good deal. But then you might have the recession coming in. You might have job losses coming in. You might, you might have all of those things to worry about. Um, so, and at the moment, you could say, well, I'm actually renting. I'll just rent. I'll just rent for a year and see how it goes. But then, are you, you're renting, so you're paying that rent money. And then you're not putting that into your mortgage and you could be, you know, two years down the road if you buy the property now potentially. So you're weighing that options are, what if I lose my job? Well, if you lose your job, you still can't pay your rent. So there are things that people are having, there's discussions being had between couples, between people that are looking to buy. And I'm not here to influence, and this is when I said I'm independent. I'm not here to influence. The, all I want to do is get that information out there to say, this is the issue. These are the things why... I think property prices will reduce in London, why they have already reduced. These are the problems landlords are going through. So if your rent does get hiked, this is what the situation is with your rent. If you do see a reduction and the landlord wanting to complete very, very quickly, these are the reasons behind it, okay? So, so you're aware of that. So I would ask a question, for example, when you're seeing a property, is it a rental property or is it a residential? These questions were never really asked before, but I would want to find out if the property that I'm buying is a rental rather than a residential. Because if it's a rental, then there are reasons why they're selling that property. What are the reasons this property is being sold? Okay, And then you can get to the point of where you are and maybe negotiate better. So those are the things. Now, there are, there's two 
other things that you've got to watch out for within this market. That's all great. And I do believe the landlord situation, the market will stabilize to an extent. It cannot continue the way it is. Okay, you can't have lenders just being so uncompetitive when the Bank of England base rate is, you know, relatively low still and you're getting, you know, rental calculations and stress testing and actual rates at six, seven, eight percent. No point. You know, that's ridiculous, right? Although that's on the buy to let side of things. Uh, limited company buy to let specifically it's got very pricey and very um it's just very selective with their criteria. Um one other well two other dangerous things is obviously we think we think this Putin thing is, is basically no one knows what's happening. From my point of view, it's getting worse. It's getting more entrenched. You from what I'm hearing out of that guy, he's not having any of it. And it's going to be extended. And one thing I do know is we're not going to get cheap gas for a long, long time. So if you're thinking this is a short term thing, it's not. Because if you're going to buy gas, you'll have to do some sort of contracts. You'll have to do some longer term contracts because the person that's selling it to you doesn't want to do, do it for one load. They want to have a contract. They want to have the security to know that they've secured the buyer for long term. So us as a, uh, as a nation of importers, we have to sign up to a longer term project. Now, I've heard that um, the liquid gas that we're having to import from different countries, from the US, from Qatar and places like that, it's like five to seven times or to ten times more expensive than our normal gas, our piped gas. So that's not going to go away short term. Okay, so I don't know what you've been told. And I, from what I've read and the information I've got, that's going to be around for a while. Okay, so you got that. The bigger problem is what's happening, and people are not really talking about it in the mainstream, is China. The property market in the China is on its knees, and it's going to fall, well, it's about to fall over. Now, let me tell you about that, uh, uh, the market, because it's so important people realize this. The Chinese property market is bigger than the U.S. stock market in total. So put Apple, Facebook, all of those companies... Exxon Mobil, Chevron, some of the biggest companies in the world, right? Put them all together. Put the S&P 500 in there, the stock market, and the Chinese property market is bigger. It's worth more. It's worth 30% of the Chinese economy, maybe even more. And that's on his knees. That's, that's got problems, big problems, right? Debt problems. There's cities there that haven't been filled. Yeah, they're built, okay? Or they're knocking down buildings because basically it's not worth their while. So there is a huge problem. Now, the saving grace is China's got a huge economy and it can throw money at it and it's not going to be on the mainstream news because they can keep it under wraps. But there is a problem there. And rest assured, if that falls over to the greater economy of the world, just have a look around your desk and your home of how many things are built in China and made in China. And if China wobbles, Trust me, we're going to wobble a lot harder because every economy, every major economy in the world is reliant on China. The only reason that we got out of the mess that we got ourselves into with the debt bubble in 2007, 2008 was the fact that China was growing at 6, 7, 8 percent and China's economy dragged everybody else out. If China's not there and the rest of the economy is stagnating, we've got this problem with Russia that's going to cause problems longer term, whether you're a buy-to-let, residential, a, a human being in the UK, a human being. It's got no colour, it's got no wealth, it's got no race. We're going to be under pressure because of external market pressures and the global economy. It doesn't matter if you're in, in Europe, out of Europe, we're all going to get hit. So those are the dangers with the market. Um, I've been accused of being a cheerleader for the property market and if you look at the 180 odd videos that I've done, I certainly cannot be called that because I've been warning about over leveraging of buy to let for a long, long time. But, you know, we are where we are. We can only do what we can do. Hopefully this information is useful. Hopefully it enables you guys to guide yourselves wherever you're going to do. If you're buy to let investors, if you're first time buyers, next time buyers. But what you can do is share this video if you think someone else would be interested in it. And like and subscribe and let me know what you think about some of those points about the china problem about the russian war because these things do matter they matter because ultimately what have they done they've they've found themselves into our mortgage payments our utility pay pay payments buying vegetables okay all of those things are related and um we as a as a group of community now nearly ten thousand people 
um, have got uh, some input and we can help each other out. So let us all know what you think. Thank you so much. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.